Hi there. Thanks for joining us here at Retro Rangers. I'm Captain John and uh, sometimes known as Captain Dumbass because sometimes I mess things up. Uh, hopefully that's not happening here. I don't know if you've noticed, but I am of a certain age. And by that, I mean old. And uh, and that actually uh, comes in handy on the show because there are a lot of old things that we like to watch and react to. And we hope you'll join us. And it's time to get started with the show. First off, let's introduce our sponsor. Wilhelm scream. That was the Wilhelm scream. Uh, I'm uh, I'm so proud of myself. And I'm even more proud to be able to do this for you. I am going to introduce the man who inspires JoeTownsell.com because, well, I mean, he makes it. It's him. It's all his, ladies and gentlemen. It <laughs> is novelist and great writer and great co-host and hilarious man, my good friend, Joe Townsell. Joe, say hello to the folks, would you? Hello to the folks, John. Um, like you, I too am a certain age. Um, I will consider myself seasoned as opposed to old. Maybe you should do the same. That's and I will idea. also point out that you are known as Captain Dumbass only to yourself, my friend. <laughs> it happens. That's and I want the, the I want the folks I just said hello to to know that with that wonderful um, sponsor ad we just saw that. Captain John wrote the soundtrack to it. So I have I have to congratulate him on that because I think that was the perfect musical accompaniment. Uh, uh, back when I was a wrestler, I was known uh, first as the stepfather and then later as stepdaddy. And at the end of my career, uh, I was fairly well known at the places where I would wrestle. So I was just stepdaddy Roscoe. <laughs> And uh, so I I make music occasionally under the name Stepdaddy Roscoe. Uh, oh. And if you ever see a, a Stepdaddy Roscoe tune out there, it was it was this guy who did it. Um, you know, another great thing I picked up uh, while wrestling was a friendship with a, an extremely entertaining young man. And I say he's young, deep. he's he's not that young. I mean, he's very young to me, uh, but uh, he's a grown man. Uh, and uh, we are delighted to have him on the show from uh, the Retro Wave. It is El Tiburon. Hey, uh, what's what's going on, John? What's well, going on, Joe? Thanks for oh, having so me. So glad again. to have you back. Yeah, you now, know you're you're Captain Dumbass, but you know I got Butthead. Here. <laughs> I guess you, you can call me Butthead, so you don't feel left out. <laughs> if, if it should ever come up. Sure, <laughs> but so far we're we're all we're all good. We're all good here on all the right. show. Um, hey, hey, John, I I uh, sorry to interject at this point, but please, we just introduced our very special guest. If you'll indulge me for just a moment, I need to acknowledge two very special people that hopefully are watching or will watch later. Last week, I I owe them an apology. They gave me some good natured ribbing for this. <laughs> we were um. Talking about the Hotel Dell and how I had previously, when living in San Diego, had some people come visit me and ah, went to the Hotel Dell. Well, of course, that. immediately after we wrapped up, they had to call me on it. So I'm going to take this moment, if I may, to acknowledge and express my love and affection and my apologies, of course, to my very dear friends, Tony Luna and Jennifer Levy. So I hope this um, sets us straight. Uh, please um, unblock me from your social media, and I hope we're cool again. <laughs> Thank this you for that, is, guys. <laughs> this is a very influential show. You got to be very careful. Got to be careful with this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> hey, fellas, what do you say we get the show started? Let's, Let's do, do it. it. Five, four, three, two, one, fire! Ladies and gentlemen, retro rangers of all 
ages. Welcome to the Retro Ranger cast. Uh, I'm very proud to be with you. Of course, Joe and uh, El Tiburon. Uh, uh, El Tiburon, uh, is, it, is it cool if we call you Mario? Call me, yeah. Call, hey, kayfabe, kayfabe, brother. <laughs> you can call me Mario. You know my my shoot my shoot name. The shoot name. Should I be using your shoot name, or would you prefer your your work name? Well, a lot of people have a hard time uh, pronouncing my nickname, so I'll, I'll take Mario over Retribution and <laughs> Retro Tribune. Retro Tribune. <laughs> so Mario's a lot better than that. <laughs> you got to be a real reader to be able to get El Tiburon. Yes. Yeah, you, you got to actually like. Yeah, not everybody's great at that, but uh, fortunately, <laughs> you're with guys who who are good at that. Yes. Uh, so uh, this show, uh, because we've got Mario on, and uh, his show is very much about him looking back at his childhood. And uh, man, you grew up in some great eras, Mario. Uh, the '80s, the '90s, like all that stuff to me is gold. I love the that era, even though I'm a child of the late sixties and seventies, eh, I didn't love it. <laughs> <laughs> I found things got better as, as the years went on. Uh, we are doing the nineties and I wanted to, let's see, maybe this is the right time to do it. I wanted to do something. Uh, add something to the show that is maybe something you saw, maybe you never saw it, but in a good natured way, I do like to rib myself sometimes. And this is, this is something that I did in the nineties and I wanted to get your guys's reaction to it. Oh boy. <laughs> I think I know what it is. I have a hunch. Uh, I bet you're wrong. Because okay. I made up my mind like yesterday that I was going to use this. I didn't even realize it was on the internet. Uh, okay, so I need to share screen. And I need to find this thing. Okay, here we go. Gentlemen, I did a commercial for Powerade in 1996. <laughs> And I I just yesterday got a wild notion, like, I wonder if it's on YouTube. I've looked for it over the decades. I've looked for it and not found it. And I found it for the first time yesterday. So here, my good friends, and please be kind. Um, this is what I was doing, one of the things I was doing in 1996. Let me blow up the screen. And here we go. He runs the hundred and fourteen four. He runs the seven two. Whoa! And he high jumps. Well, sort of. But wow, you should see his power rate now. He won the chance to train at a U.S. Olympic Training Center and a white cat to get you here too. Odds of scoring are one and four with discounts on athletic gear from Champ Sports. Discounts on subscriptions to Sports Illustrated and free power aid. It's my favorite part. Yeah. <laughs> The, the, why, why do I get flashbacks to John Belushi talking about little couple donuts? That is. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got. Uh, can I get back to that? Because. Um. Well, a. I don't know if you remember Mario, but when we used to go to wrestling school, I used to wear this shirt. Oh, you did. <laughs> I don't I remember that. I did. I had a couple of those. And, uh, oh, yeah. So what you were saying, Joe, I, the the celebration movements that I do after I throw the javelin, I'm doing what Belushi did. <laughs> See, I'm doing that arm pump, which he took from, well, I mean, now we would say Caitlyn Jenner. I don't like using dead names, so I'm not going to. But Caitlyn Jenner, uh, during her uh, decathlete years, um, had that great clip where somebody had handed her a, uh, a flag, and she was she was kind of doing that. Anyway, hey, if anybody wants to get real mad at us because we're not using dead names, you go right ahead. We've got comments over on the side. Uh, you, you go right ahead, and we will ignore you. Uh, but John, we will I got to say that. 
we, we can just end the show right now. I mean, how, can <laughs> go, how can we go anywhere from here? It's all downhill. <laughs> uh thankfully barry corbin is with us barry the k a very good friend of mine from the old school days and uh let's go to liquid television this was mario's choice oh yes yes love me some liquid television and i i never uh we had a regular sunday night show that my wife and i used to perform at uh and i believe liquid television was sunday nights and that's why I wasn't seeing it. I don't know. Yeah, I think it was like Sunday at 10, 10 p.m. or 9 p.m. It was late. That's, yeah, that sounds right. We were usually like getting home from the club about that time. Uh, and it was, uh, it was, you know, I'm not sorry about that. It was really fun. Okay, <laughs> so I need to get rid of you. And now I'm going to share. Okay, now I'm pretty sure... Mario, you may have to talk me or talk us through this a little bit because I wasn't able to find the exact clip. <laughs> How was it? Minute. Oh, yeah, I think it's around here. Yeah, there you go. Beavis and Butthead. Okay, so we're going to be watching Beavis and Butthead. This is early Beavis and Butthead? This is before they got the, their show on MTV. So this was wow. kind of like the pilot, I guess, or right. first exposure to Beavis and Butthead. I didn't Liberty. know they existed prior to that show. Yeah. Yeah, Mike Judge did some really early stuff. And this, I think, is one of his early pieces. So here we go. Learn how to make a lot of money. Fast cash at government auction. Buy house. Luxury car for no money down. What are you waiting for? Don't miss the ball. <laughs> Wait a minute. They used to sniff glue? <laughs> <laughs> this is very early, Beavis and Butthead. Very, very early. <laughs> well, this really explains the prominent nostrils. Buy house for no money down. I have no money. I buy property for no money down. Make two hundred thousand dollars. Oh, and by the way, um, having an Asian character like that in your cartoon not necessarily something you can get away with anymore. Yeah, I was gonna say this was a uh, early nineties, right here. Yeah, well, yeah especially this is early day. He must have his hands right there. I mean, I'm kind of. <laughs> that was cool. This Sunday evening, night. Get ready for the biggest monster truck heavy metal tractor full crash a thought ever. Huge monster, monster truck tearing ass all night long. Take a ticket and price space for the whole seat, but you'll only leave the edge. Whoa. Whoa. We're, We're there, there, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> what if you go to save a dynamite in somebody's butt <laughs> and then you let it? <laughs> that would be cool. Get your <laughs> gamers ready for this one, folks, because the oh, Stormblazer is about to take on a brand new 1992. Oh, the Garfield on the windshield. It's got the Garfield. What's the Garfield? <laughs> <laughs> But look, you don't see anyone on their cell phones, just people having a good time. Just people enjoying the moment. <laughs> hey, baby. Anywhere from now on the Kirkland Group, let's welcome our musical guest, David Van Could I have your attention, please? I just like to remind everybody that today is Earth Day. And every day is Earth Day. So I'd like to ask everybody to enjoy this now. This song that would be really great. Okay. Before they had red hats. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, isn't he their teacher? Yeah, I guess you know the, the continuity isn't very accurate. Because I think he died right there. <laughs> I would say. Like, hey, what the hell is this? It's Sir Julius. 
the Roman god of feasts. <laughs> you have desecrated my temple. You offend me. Prepare to feel the brunt of my wrath. Man, that's a big fart. <laughs> <laughs> what one, too? This is awesome. That's high class humor right there. Oh my God. <laughs> Man, that's highbrow. Oh boy. <laughs> I mean, I you know, we never really counted on um never really counted on Beavis and Butthead for like the brainiest entertainment, but uh wow, they used to be worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and there's another episode with like frog baseball. You can imagine what that you know what oh, happened on that episode. <laughs> <laughs> very early oh, on um you know and and i should mention uh to mario that um you and i had been trying to find i mean I, I i know you worked on it for a long time and i was working on it too trying to find clips of eon flux i couldn't find any i tried also this uh over the, two weeks ago when you asked me i couldn't find clips it, it's it's a really hard show to find uh it is like a lot of MTV shows. It's on uh, Paramount Plus. Oh, um, that's why. Because they, they they used to be up on YouTube, and now they're like thirty second segments that I I could find. That was it. Yeah, yeah. They they've done a really nice job of scrubbing those off the internet. Uh, there's very little yeah. clippage uh, to those shows. And anytime I could find even like a little clip, it's <laughs> like I have no idea what's going on. The full clips are not much better, but at least they are self-contained. Uh, but they can be very, uh, very confusing, uh, that show. And I would like to find it again. So we'll we'll see if we can uh, do anything with it in the future. In the meantime. Now, one question before we move on, if I may. Oh, please, Mr. Townsend, go right ahead. Did the segment we just watched, was that actually as it aired or was it condensed? It was it abbreviated because... If if it was just the way it was on Liquid Television, then that was a, just enough Beavis and Butthead to, you know, crack you up and move on to the next thing. It, it sounds like that's that's my understanding. My yeah, understanding. Liquid, yeah, Liquid tev Television were, were just like two minute, one minute cartoon episodes, just Perfect. a bunch of episodes in thirty minutes. Yeah, and that was from season two, and that was episode nine. Uh, but it was like a twenty four minute show. You know, um, not a full 30 because of the commercials, although I don't even know if 20, 24 minutes was right. But uh, let me take a look at that. No. Oh, my God. 19 and a half minutes. That's how many commercials they showed. Wow. <laughs> that was a lot back then. Yeah, that was a lot. Wow. They showed like 10 and a half minutes of commercials during that. Wow. But they were getting their money's worth. So who can blame them? Honestly. Right. Well, how much, uh, how much can you can you belly laugh anyway in a, in a half hour? You know, you gotta have a break. <laughs> well, Liquid Television was an interesting show because mm -hmm. at a time when everything was, let's see, so this is early '90s. Yeah, everything was kind of well. Everything in the '80s, I always remember as being sort of shiny and uh, you know finished looking, and uh, you know having like a a real, you know crafted look to it in the 90s it got a little bit grungier yeah no Is pun intended that yeah the grunge <laughs> era that's when pearl jam nirvana people didn't want to see the hair hair boy bands anymore everything got a little uglier and a little harder mm -hmm. to look at and it's funny because i look at liquid television i know this was my reaction at the time which was man that is one ugly looking show <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah well i mean um Something occurs to me because, and you know, I'm always going to find some way to tie it back to our, our favorite show. But I know the original series of Star Trek, those episodes, absent commercials, were 52 minutes. Mm. By the time yeah. Next Generation rolled around, it was 43 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it was, I guess around that time, they just started adding, padding a lot of more commercials, you know, a lot more. Uh, yeah. yeah I, I can tell you from having. Um, sort of brushed up against the world of writing spec scripts, um, which I was doing in the early 90s and mm -hmm. all my friends were doing. Okay, I'll, I'll be really specific. <laughs> I wasn't one of them, but everyone, 
every comedian, every funny person who had even a whisper of maybe someone would look at a script they wrote would write a spec script for Seinfeld. Oh, really? <laughs> everybody, everybody had a Seinfeld script. But Every, you didn't. I, you didn't have one. I did not, and I actually. Um, I wrote a spec script for a show called Big Wave Daves. <laughs> I don't never heard of that. Big I Wave can't. Dave? It Big Wave Dave. Uh and it was uh Big Wave Dave's was a surf shop started by some guys who moved to Hawaii and then they sold the idea as a uh sitcom. And I had friends who were friends of <laughs> um Oh my God, the um, the Arkins, and which Arkin? Adam. Adam Arkin starred in the show. It was a very funny show. Uh, David Morse was in it. A um, couple other great actors. Uh, the mom from Malcolm in the Middle. I wish I could remember her name. She was in it too. She was fantastic. Um, oh my God, Kurtwood Smith was in it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> maybe i'll see if i could dig this show up we never a friend of mine and i wrote a spec script for that it never sold but uh the people who did read it from the show thought it was very funny so, what does that mean spec script what is that oh uh, a spec script you're writing for free and you're hoping someone you know it's speculation speculatory you're hoping someone will look at it and say, oh, look at this little sample you wrote for me. Um, this is great. I'm going to pass this on. Or, wow, you should keep working on this. <laughs> it could go either way. So you could maybe get a gig, like as yeah. a writer? Oh, okay. Oh, absolutely. I mean, like right now, if you wanted to write a spec script for a sitcom, I would say write for Abbott Elementary. Uh, it's a great little show. It's very cute. I don't know that they need writers, but um, but it's you know th this would be the the kind of thing. Well, if there was like a huge hit show, uh, Abbott Elementary just won some Emmys, so I like them, uh, and it is a good show. Uh, my wife loves it. But um, but yeah, back in the day, you would write a script for Friends. You would write a script for uh, Seinfeld. You would write a script for, you know, uh, Two and a Half Men. You would write or a script. If you, were, if you were Joe back in the day, yes, I wrote spec scripts because at the time, actually throughout the whole tenure of Rick Berman and his cohorts, yes. you did not need an agent to submit scripts to TNG or DS9. That's right. So I submitted, wrote full scripts and submitted to two of them to TNG and the third for DS9 and the latter of which took forever for me to get a response. I think well, it was in a slush pile somewhere. Mm. Well, I got a rejection, unfortunately, but it was at least signed by Brandon Braga's secretary impersonating his signature. who <laughs> was one of the top producers by then. Right. Right. Years later, I saw him at a convention in San Diego and he was there and I asked him, I said, hey, I showed him the letter. And I said, is this significant? He says, if this, if you got this, that means that I got the script. I at least reviewed it. So it got through four levels of review before it got to me. I so love that's the closest that. I ever got to writing for Star Trek. But hey, that was very gratifying when he, when he acknowledged that at the time. That's uh, cool. Sometimes that is good sometimes that's i don't want to say it's good enough because of course you know selling a script is is what you wanted to do but the fact that he did look at it and you know he probably you know probably skipped through it a few times he was probably like oh let me see what happens before the credits let me see what happens at the end of you know act two um, well unless but, he was blowing smoke that's that's pretty much how he described it so i'll, yeah. I'll take it at face value <laughs> i i uh you know I, you know, what do I have? I have a Powerade commercial. I can tell you that I knocked on a million doors and I got a couple of things and I'm not, you know, I'm not sorry I got them. Um, but uh, yeah, we're always shooting for the stars and uh, sounds sounds like you're scripted very well. So three scripts in all you submitted? Yes, like I said, um, I did two for Next Generation. And by the time DS9 came around, I had an idea for that. And 
yeah, total of three. I mean, total. I mean, the as you know, the um, the script page for for a tele telescript teleplay mm -hmm. um, was roughly equal. Each page was equal to a minute of screen yes. time. So right. they were full forty five to fifty page um, scripts, and oh, wow. one of them at least caught the eye briefly of someone higher up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's where Ronald D. Moore came from. He came from the open submission uh, policy, and he, right. he's one of my favorite exec producers of science fiction. So that's a, that's a great system. That was very smart of them to do that. Can I tell you, when I was first thinking about moving to Los Angeles, it was years until I finally did, but when I was first thinking about it, a friend of mine said, I was like, I would move out here if I could get a job. And he said, well, I, I can get you a job pretty easy, but it's a, it's a gopher job for a TV show. Uh, and you've got your choice. And I was like, oh, which choice? And he's like, well, you could work on MacGyver. And I was like, I hate MacGyver. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's the other one? And you're going to hate me for this. There's a new show. They're calling it Star Trek The Next Generation. Oh. oh. <laughs> and I was like, that's never going to make it to air. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what what, uh, um, wh what network is it going to be on? And Because, uh, I mean, if it's going to be on NBC or something, that might be worth it. He was like, oh, no, it's syndicated. And I'm like, nope. Nope. Forget it. Forget <laughs> it. The show's never going to work. It's never going to happen. <laughs> well, you and Patrick Stewart agreed on that at the beginning. So, <laughs> no, uh, Barry the K says, What? And <laughs> I will say, Barry, this was through an Ithaca College connection. Uh, Barry and I both went to Ithaca College, uh, different times, but we we both went. And, um, and yeah, I, I had friends who were working on shows, and I, I can't remember, I think, uh, I think it was my friend Sue who was working at Paramount. <laughs> Anyway, I I'm I'm happy it worked out the way it did. I'm happy I came to LA when I did. I'm happy I got to have a nice <laughs> a nice run in New York before that happened. Um very scary. <laughs> He's still <laughs> in I shock. Can't believe it. <laughs> well, poor John has a permanent bruise on his butt from kicking himself, I think. Believe me, <laughs> I did that thing where like you get the rope pulley system so the boot is constantly kicking yourself in the butt. <laughs> I did that because oh man round about you know season three of next generation I was like you are the biggest idiot in the world and I did actually work uh, on a different show with a guy who had done that job for next generation and it didn't you know it didn't lead to huge things for him so I can kind of say well you know it's not like I would have become a producer or anything. It's not like I was going to be an actor. Uh, I don't know, John. Show. I mean, that, that guy must have had, you know, no more than one-tenth the talent you do. Come on. <laughs> hey, well, what woulda, coulda, shoulda. Yep, yep. You can't, you can't get, uh, you know, you can't get, uh, can't get upset about these things because, honestly, I'm really happy with the way things turned out. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, one, one more question about liquid television. I'm just curious. Yes, um, yes. Where did it air? What channel? Oh, you know, that is an excellent question because Barry the K was asking that question. Uh, it appeared on MTV. It was an MTV show. Okay. It was M mm -hmm. part of M MTV's, um, you know, new shows that they were showing in the 90s. They, um, a lot of people are going to remember correctly that MTV is, uh, or the nineties are when MTV started getting into making their own kinds of shows. They were doing mm -hmm. their own sports shows and they were doing, um, uh, we were actually reality. talking. Yes. Reality. They, they, uh, I mean, they came up with the real world. That was them. Real world. That was them it. before a lot of people were doing that. Yeah. We could have done the real world. Well, it could okay. have. we still can. <laughs> were, were they the pioneers then of reality TV? That's the, uh, the earliest reality show I remember, real world. Yeah, I can't think of much that happened prior to me because things like Survivor and those things came like the following decade, early 2000s. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Yeah. Uh, and and I could say, no, no, I think you're right. I think it was after 2000 because I remember working on the X show, uh, which was our crazy little man show ripoff show that I used to do. <laughs> and um, and at lunch, they would do like a big group lunch. And um, and so everybody would get together and they'd be watching these big screens on the set. And I'm watching how wrapped they are, how much they love Survivor. And I don't know if I had the feeling at the time, but it, it became true, which was I was there to watch the death of my job. <laughs> because reality television put TV hosts uh, and uh, actors, sitcom actors, it put us out of work. It, it was the new fascination. And it was an hour long and they were using untrained, you know, people who didn't, who didn't go through what I went through or what my fellow actors and, and hosts and comedians were going through. You know, we'd come up through show business and now there was a new way of getting into a, a very hot TV show. Uh, now, Barry says Big Brother. And I do think it's possible that the English were early on reality TV. Because I know they would do shows like Survivor. Um, they had a bunch of, and Big Brother was a big one for them. But I can't remember when it started. I would, I, I would, would agree that it probably, you know, I know that the U.S. version is based on the um, British one, and that would have probably been right around the turn of the century. So I pretty, think. pretty, not too far on the heels of what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, like the late 90s was when all of that shifted. Of course, building up to the late 90s, a lot of sitcoms got like a big, like they poured so much money into them, and then they, no one liked them. So um, there was a lot of wasted money in trying to find what people like. So I do get why reality TV became a big deal. That and the well, fact that everybody loves a car wreck. Well, that and the fact that it's cheap. And I tell you, John, Maybe we haven't missed the boat. Maybe we have the idea for our next show together. You know, we have the Golden Bachelor that just finished up. But why not the Geriatric World starring me? You know? <laughs> <Hey. laughs> when old people get real, <laughs> get real old, <laughs> get real old. <laughs> you know, in the early two thousands, I did get approached at a mall to audition. Or some guy was walking around, hey, would you like to audition for this reality TV show? And I was like, no, I'm good. <laughs> My early, like early 20s. Well, uh, what was it, Mario? I don't remember. I just, I just, it just triggered that memory right now. Like, oh, yeah, I remember walking around the Glendale Galleria. And some guy was like, oh, would you like to audition for this? And I'm like, no, I'm good. He, he was probably just going to take me to his apartment. With a, just a mattress in there, probably, there probably was no reality TV show. Well, that would have been the reality, and probably not a very pleasant one. If you <laughs> <laughs> might have dodged a bullet there, but <laughs> honestly, the real thing is just as sleazy. So, <laughs> in my thinking, it could go either way. It sounds like an even trade to me. Right? Hey, look, Billy's with us, Billy. Oh, there goes the Billster. I you remember him, my manager. I, Billy Sinister, and he. Oh, the two of you were so funny, man. Mario. Okay, this is really blowing kayfabe, so maybe I shouldn't talk about that character. If you uh, want you to can, talk about that character, you which bring character. Up Mario. Oh, you can bring which one? The, the panadero, the baker. Oh no, which? he was the best. No, I was thinking about <laughs> Wicked. Okay, all right. Yeah, you can talk about him. Yeah, w Wicked had no mouth on his mask. And Wicked didn't talk. Billy talked for him. And, uh, but, um, <laughs> Wicked was so funny. <laughs> I remember getting thrown out. There was a wrestling match we were doing. I get thrown out of the ring. Billy Sinister and Wicked are over me. I open up my eyes. You two are over me. <laughs> and I can see you silently arguing about who's going to give me mouth to mouth resuscitation. <laughs> <laughs> and you're each like nope you do it <laughs> Billy's like I'm not doing it you do it and I'm just like get out of here oh boy you good times very very good good time. clean fun and welcome Billy so, so he's uh is he really a first time listener this week yeah uh, I I think so yeah I I, right. I think he's he's here for Mario he's here for El Tiburon 
There you that's, go. Hey, that's why we have Mario because he runs our audience. You know, that brought the bills here. Childhood <laughs> friend, right there. Really, you guys go all the way back to childhood. Well, huh? We knew each other since we were 12, 12 years old. Wow. Uh, our that's first, amazing. My, my first memory uh, of him, he wanted to sit next to me because I had the WWF magazines. And I would be <laughs> reading them during reading time instead of reading like Uncle Barry Finn or Indian in the Cupboard. I was reading my <laughs> WWF magazine with Adam Baum on the cover. And Billy was like, oh, I want to sit next to this guy. He has the WWF magazines during reading time. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome oh my god do you remember uh billy says good times good to see you good to see you billy uh uh do you remember back when um wcw and wwf had their magazines that stuff's all gone now because of uh, the web the internet but man i i used to love those magazines i used to get wrestling digest yeah, the the black and white ones, black and white picture ones. Yeah. The the one I got was like um it was like those uh, soap opera magazines that like your auntie gets uh in the in the checkout at the supermarket. Well, kind of like Reader's Digest it sounds like. Yeah, but it was it was thin. It was like oh, um okay. remember like Jet magazine? Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, there'd be like a this little magazine it'd be in the in the little racks near yeah. near the checkout anyway. We should get to our uh, featured presentation of the evening. Uh, we are going to talk about one of my all-time favorite TV shows. And I love it because it's not great. It's it's kind of bad. And that's one of the reasons why I love it. And I have never seen it. You've never seen it. Uh, Sci Factor, Chronicles of the Paranormal. Uh, Mario, have you ever seen it? Never, never heard of this. Mm -mm. <laughs> um, the the thing there's two things that I love about it. Uh, I loved syndicated TV, just loved it. So Hercules and Xena, uh, all all those old, you know, kind of forgotten, half half noticed shows. Mm -hmm. I just loved them. And uh, Sci Factor would come on late on Sunday nights. And I'm a night owl. And I'd always be up all by myself watching crappy TV. <laughs> and uh, that's when I first got into it. I also got into it because of its star. the Not the guy who is in the stories every week, but the guy who introduced the stories. And that, I think I can get it from this screen. Yeah, okay. So here we go. All right. This is the uh, oh. opening titles. Paul Miller, one of Canadians, one of Canada's finest. Nancy Ann, she's the girl. Barclay Hope, you've seen this guy on TV a million times. Colin Fox used to do um, used to do soap operas. Maurice, actually, uh, I only knew him from this series, but I like him a lot. And of course, he's got the like headset with the little microphone on it. Very modern technology. Catchy soundtrack. Catchy soundtrack. Definitely getting a copyright strike on that. <laughs> Oops. Range from the mundane to the fascinating to the outright dangerous. Well, danger was the last thing on Blaine McAllister's mind, however, when he decided to build his dream house, a place to live out his vision of family contentment for years to come. But when the partially constructed dwelling started to behave as if it had a mind of its own, dreams quickly turned to horror. Didn't Dan Aykroyd impersonate Serling a couple times? <laughs> I think he did. Isn't that funny? I didn't even think of it that way, Joe. But yeah, he's like uh, he's like doing a Rod Serling thing. Well, definitely, especially with the hands clasped in front of him. And, you know. Yes, yes. Well, uh, he and his brother, Peter Aykroyd, were exec producers and put this show together. Um, but the thing that they don't tell you is most of this stuff was made up. Uh, it's not based on anything, um, which I love, that they're just completely lying about everything. They're lying about there being a... a 
a division, a science division that investigates <laughs> these things. That's not true. Um, that these are case files. That's not true. My favorite part is they're constantly telling you it's taking place in the United States of America. And then it's clearly shot in like Edmonton. <laughs> <laughs> Was this around X-Files? Like around when the X-Files were on? Yes. And so this would be uh, how long after X-Files um, was it when this debuted? I think I think by about five years, maybe. And Uh-oh. John froze, I think. John froze. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll attempt to answer the rest of the question. He was basically, I think it was really right on the heels of... Um, X Files going off, so it was clearly, I think, um, inspired by. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was gonna ask. Were they just trying to cash in on the, you know, trying to ride the the gravy train? Trying to. Oh well, I mean, that's of course not uncommon. And like I said, I mean, as we discussed before, I mean, it was very, it's very common, still is, uh, for a show to be popular in one country and then be, you know, um, adapted for some other way for another country. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I never heard of this show. He was giving me like Robert Stack vibes in the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> like as, as introducing. So I'm guessing this one was uh they would have different episodes. It wasn't like one story. No, I think was, it was an ongoing um situation like the X Files. I mean, there were different case files, as as John said with air quotes. Um, so it had ongoing characters and with I don't know why they felt the need for Dan Aykroyd to be a host introducing these stories i don't think it was an anthology john can clarify it for us when he gets back on but um uh, definitely i think kind of a mixture of of approaches here to be sure dan Aykroyd, like he he's into like all the sci-fi stuff right dan Aykroyd. he certainly is and he also gives off a little bit of a joe friday vibe in this intro you know because he uh played that part comedically uh in the dragnet movie um a few years after this uh, was on the air, but um, and like I said, he's also Canadian, so it stands to reason he be, would be part of this production. But <laughs> um, yeah, like I said, it it, it definitely um, sets off with that that X Files vibe, especially the intro we just saw. And like I said, nothing nothing succeeds like success, as they say. Yeah, yeah. Because Ackroyd did he write Ghostbusters? He was one of the co writers, yes. Yeah, and then he and was I in said, well, we'll zone. jump ahead, but I guess we've got a, an actual, in my opinion, an actual bona fide Ghostbusters sequel coming out, I think, this year. Yeah, 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 with yeah. Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, where they actually have the I'm sorry, but the real Ghostbusters, not the kids. Well, they had the kids too, but <laughs> that's fine as long as they got you know the big four in there. But there he goes, he's oh back, my God. John. I, I made I made an attempt to um. Talk to Mario about um, Sci Factor a little bit. So I'll, please take it away. <laughs> oh my God. I can't believe what happened. Uh, <laughs> I guess I froze, huh? Because yeah, I can see what, what Carla put up. Hey, what's up, Carla? <laughs> and one of my buddies right there, Carla, too. She Carla says, Carla Koala. Hello, Tib sent me, said if I don't subscribe, I can no longer game with him. Yeah. <laughs> Playing Dude. hardball out there, yeah. Tim. Man, that's a huge incentive there. <laughs> yeah, we have community game nights on YouTube, so people join in and play like Mario Kart and multiplayer games. So she's one of the people that plays with us, Carla. That looks so much fun. I gotta check that out. I didn't know you were doing that. Yeah. You still doing Twitch? I do. Yeah, I stream on Twitch, but I'm only mostly I'm on YouTube. So I, I stream on YouTube video game. So people like we have a community game night, and I will this week. It'll be like Mario Kart. And whoever's watching can jump in and play with us, Mario Kart. And we're just, you know, just making jokes, making, you know, just having a good time, laughing it up. Just, that's that's just all like we do need to get together for sure. Yeah. yeah. Just like John, I, I, Mario asked me a question. I wasn't entirely positive the answer. I did a little research on Sci Factor before we went on air, but yeah, this was not an anthology. It was an ongoing situation like X Files, was it not? Let me tell you something both it, the answer to both questions is yes they did the um what do we call it um that uh x-files was doing the mythology mm -hmm. 
So there would be like over the course of a, a season, there would there would be a, a storyline. Now, at first, it was just strict anthology. Okay. But then they redid the whole show after season one. And so the guy who was like the main guy in uh, season one got eliminated from the show and they replaced him with Matt Frewer. Max. <laughs> and, uh, and um, what's his name from uh, uh, Law and Order? Uh, oh my God. It was like the, the assistant DA, um, Michael, I want to say Michael Moriarty. I think you're correct. Yeah. And, uh, he, he became like the deep throat character. If you're into X-Files, which I very much was. So, you know, he's the guy who knows too much and he's, you know, trying to avoid the authorities, but he's trying to feed information to the investigator. It's such a straight up ripoff of X-Files in that sense. (laughs) But I did love that, uh, after, after the first season when they were like, oh no, this is definitely happening in Kansas. Wink, wink, not (laughs) happening in Manitoba. Uh, they started to get more Canadian, <laughs> which made me <laughs> happy because, you know, come on, own it, own it. You're from Canada. Go ahead and own it. So, uh, so was the purpose of having Dan Aykroyd as a host basically to, lead, you know, perpetuate the illusion that this was based on true case files? Yes. And I think it was also, uh, since he and his brother were executive, uh, producers of the show, I think they were trying to, um, just see what they could get off their name, you know, see what they could, you know, there are a lot of shows Mm. from Canada and they just, they, they go into syndication and no one really pays attention to them. And you never really end up hearing about the Da Vinci inquest or uh, crossing lines or cracked. Uh, These were good shows in Canada, but (laughs) not really anywhere else. And, um, you know, my my father's side of the family is all from Canada. So I, I tend to have a lot more love for our neighbors up north. They don't love me, but. I have a lot of love for them. I find that hard to believe. You know, <laughs> I would love to go back up there and put it to the test. It's funny because my <laughs> wife's like, you know, should we think about traveling? And I'm like, to Canada? And she's like, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I know she wants to go to Hawaii, but I'm like, no, I want to see, you know, British Columbia. I, I want to, no, I want to go to Nova Scotia, you know. Anyway, uh, I just like gray skies and rain. It's just, just built into me <laughs> okay i think this might be the window we want so here we go we're gonna watch the episode oh my god we're gonna go over an hour because i crashed oh it's crazy all right thank you all right time thank you for with us. Fun, gentlemen hey i do a podcast <laughs> i know stuff all, stuff always happens something always happens. there's there's always something all right this is um UFO encounter. It is one of oh. these sub stories. They used to do two stories per episode. Uh, and it was an anthology in that sense. Uh, so now they're going to tell you about this case, this half hour case. And uh, it does star a very young Ryan Gosling. Oh, damn. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> so uh, Ryan Gosling, of course, huge, huge star. But uh, let's let's check out. Uh, UFO encounter from the first episode. This is the second half of the first episode of Sci Factor. And let me fire that up for you. Come on, Adam, slow down. No way. Look, skinny dipping was your idea. My excellent idea. (laughs) Well, not if Dad finds out we're AWOL. You're telling me it wasn't worth it? See Sally and Janine? I guess. Okay, if we keep going, we might get home for breakfast. (laughs) <laughs> oh, it sucks. Uh, yeah. Let's cut through Layton's ranch. That'll get us home in 20 minutes. It's off limits. But so are Sally and Janine. They're not church going girls, boys. <laughs> hey, 
three o'clock in the morning. How's late never going to know? As a kid who grew up in the country, can I just tell you, never you touch a wire fence. Never, <laughs> ever touch a wire. Don't pee on a wire fence. <laughs> Don't pee on the electric fence. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, this is okay. So, uh, two two underage drinkers. What could possibly go wrong? Looking to do a little cow tip in someone. Check out that haircut too on Gosling. Right, right. Come on, you. Oh, that's Gosling. Sure, yeah, that's Gosling. Oh, and can I just say, in Ryan Gosling's favor, and actually, this applies to um, other young uh, talents uh, of the late '80s. Uh, he had been on the new Mickey Mouse Club. I didn't know that either. Okay. Uh, I believe he was on around the same time as Justin Timberlake and Britney Spears. Oh, man. I didn't know that. I didn't know he was a Mickey Mouse Club kid. Yeah. yeah now now so, here he is walking through the cornfield, filmed on location in Iowa. I, <laughs> Iowa. <laughs> Skinny <laughs> dipping right, with his friend. Sure, sure. Get, get over that rise. You look for Beacon's gas station. Nice tracking shot. That's not easy. Are they like on a conveyor belt or something? <laughs> yeah, that's not easy to do. Uh oh. Let's go. Two teenage boys being chased through a field by people with searchlights. <laughs> Always falling. Yeah, why is it when people are running, someone always has to fall? Oh, guy, Whoa, what's guys, this, can what's you fight like you're being shot? The SETI project, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, a worldwide network of radio dishes designed to receive any communication from outer space cultures if they exist. Now, despite the absence to date of any such messages and the repeated non acknowledgement of actual contact by our North American military, we are continually confronted with reports of craft sightings, communications, and abductions associated with a variety of sentient extraterrestrial beings. When the OSIR was asked to investigate anomalous lights in Crescent County, Iowa, it found the bewildered residents' agitated state as challenging as the phenomenon it had set out to analyze. John, I told him, Mario, I'm yeah. getting a, definitely a Rod Serling, Joe Friday hybrid vibe here. Is he actually there? In the control uh, room, or is that a green screen? Couldn't tell. Uh, you know, that is a great question. I'm just going to... I think he's though. there. Yeah, I think it might be yeah. a little bit early for a green screen type stuff. Being commonplace anyway. Well, remember, uh, like, a lot of times when you're watching um, movies, and I guess maybe it was... An, well, was it expensive? I mean, there were, there were green screen shows. But, yes, I get your point joe because this looks like this is probably um digital video and i don't think they i think it was prohibitively expensive at this point and to answer your question mario i do believe this is a real set they um, probably okay. shot maybe six uh six episodes worth a day for like three or four days oh, okay yeah i was just getting wwf superstars you would have like vince mcmahon very polarizing figure right now in the news, oh. but you would have Vince McMahon, and then the background was like this audience. And I yes. always thought he was at the arena, but it was a fake, like green screen. And this was early nineties, and that's what it, this kind of looks like. I don't know why. But yeah, maybe, um, maybe he is there. Well, you know, um, that that would be video that they okay. that they would shoot that on, and uh, video, of course, um, you know, the greatest example of a green screen uh, on video is uh, weather the somebody in front of the weather map because you know they're just in front of a green wall they're looking at a monitor to see what's behind them but no i think they you know they're trying to make you think the osir is real and uh <laughs> and those are all day players and i'm sure they're from toronto uh, <laughs> and i'm sure they're thrilled to have the gig um oh uh, you know uh <laughs> dan Aykroyd's very nice when you meet him in person uh, and uh and i do love that he put on a suit and a tie for this well not only that i mean maybe maybe marl's correct too now that i think about it because this could be um footage shop you know projected behind him in some way and they positioned Aykroyd so he would cover up robbie the robot who's in the original footage so <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, we don't know for sure. Let's just leave it. Th- I'm gonna. I'm not gonna say no to that because I want that to be true. Yes. <laughs> All right. Let's see if I. In Crescent that. County, Iowa, it found the bewildered residents' agitated state as challenging as the phenomenon it had set out to analyze. Am I the only one who knows how to do a Dan Aykroyd imitation? Just the facts, <laughs> ma'am. Ma'am, just the facts. Surf's up, but not for you, Beach Boy. All right, Fred, what's going on here? I there he is. Know, Jesse. After those kids were taken last, last week. week. Fred, Fred, we still don't know what happened last week. Now I want all of you to move on out of here. And maybe do something about the open containers of alcohol. <laughs> what the hell? Boy, I was a hard drinking state, man. <laughs> Sure, gather the crowd this lightning. <laughs> Let's all go up at the cornfield, watch the lightning. And yeah, not much going on in Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> File number 52111, case manager Connor Doyle, initial case log entry. We're investigating a possible UFO sighting and a claimed alien abduction in Crescent County, Iowa. Our main contact is a sheriff, Jesse Weckel. Weckle, Weckle. not Weber. Sure what to think Other than this town is going nuts. So there were multiple witnesses for each sighting. Man, you'd be hard pressed to find somebody in this town who hasn't seen those damn lights in the sky. You saw them yourself? Oh hell yeah! Although whether I saw northern lights or the gray come down and say hello, I saw something. Okay. Uh, a little game I like to play, a little drinking game. Anytime somebody says house or out, but they say house or out instead, <laughs> take a drink. Take a swig. Take a swig. <laughs> uh, uh, I I don't know. Okay. I should also say that when I started watching the show, it's when Matt Frewer started on the show. So I started about uh, season two. So I I actually don't know season one very well at all. This is all new to me. Uh, but I will tell you that the guy there, the uh, Canadian Fox Mulder, uh, is uh, he's not long for this show. Well, it's all he's new a- to all of us, John, but it's just another day in Iowa to them. So confirmed that nothing was scheduled to fly over your air. I just love how the sheriff's like. Whether it's lights in the sky or just some grays coming down to say hello. Oh, you seem well versed in the UFO lore. The grays, eh? <laughs> hmm. You gotta know your stuff to know about them. I think. I don't know. Airspace during the time of the sightings. No military flights or training exercises within a hundred miles. Yeah, I've been down that it's a weather balloon road. I got nothing. <laughs> so we only have visual confirmation. Not if you factor in the Keeler Boys story. Well, exactly. It's what happened to those boys that got the town all lit up. They're not talking now. <laughs> well, that's Chad and Adam. They know when to climb up. Oh, like Chad and Adam. <laughs> I don't know why that's so fun to, I'm funny. Of course, to me. of course, one of them had to be Chad. Of <laughs> course, of course. <laughs> Mr. Just for to talk to me as Chatham. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go down and talk to the Chathams. <laughs> I don't know anything about her. She seems cute. Nice pantsuit. Normal behavior yeah, yeah. for We're kids professional. that age stuck out here in the sticks. Oh, oh, there was one stuck out here in the sticks. Oh, <laughs> wait a minute. I got my beverage here. I got nothing. So we only have visual confirmation. Not if you factor in the Keeler Boys story. Well, exactly. It's what happened to those boys that got the town all lit up. They're not talking now. <laughs> well, that's Chad and Adam. They know when to climb up. <laughs> like misdemeanors. Normal behavior for kids that age stuck out here in the sticks. Oh, your report says the doctor. I don't know. Was that an oot that uh, stuck out here? I think he. <laughs> oh, what I, the heck? you got to give it up for any Canadian who's who can get rid of that stuff. <laughs> I had a Canadian roommate in college, and he never wanted to hear anyone. He never wanted anyone to hear him say a. Eh? So he'd be like, "How was your day?" And I could tell, like, he wanted to say A at the end of it. Well, it must have been a new John, because the guy's drinking his coffee there. <laughs> who He's an feels they, un- they went something traumatic. Well, they told everyone they were abducted by aliens, and they've got the scars to prove it. Those boys were as good as scared as I've ever seen two kids get. Yeah. I've been waiting out yeah. there since those boys first got broke. 
probed. <laughs> no one said they got probed. Man. Oh. Good heavens. What fanfic have you been and reading? We better be ready to defend our yacht. <laughs> well, it's clear and irrefutable that these vessels are from outer space. Otherwise, why would you folks even be here? Well, duh. Huh? About a week later, I came back again. Circled the field again. But there were too many of us for them to try to make a landing. I'll be damned if I'm going to let some alien take our children. Sure, they could land rolls like a monster Lana. truck. <laughs> Curtis Layton. All these names are like white person. <laughs> My land. I slept right through it. My wife and kids too. Oh, I was thinking. Maybe this ain't that dude each. from Misery. The guy gets his <laughs> ankle broken. What the, what's that? <laughs> So oh, they not James Con, no. <laughs> yeah, they can't afford James Con. Though this might be Canada's James Con. We don't Canadian know. Canadian James Con. <laughs> James Con. Maybe just a couple kids up something. It's important to remember. They're clearly trying to tell us something. We must decipher the message. She's probably probably the Meryl Streep of Canada. We're cutting through this deal when it happened. You can't, it, man. They don't want to hear. Come on. Flying saucer came out of nowhere. We tried to run, but it was too fast. Man, just don't throw them again, place. man. What kind of Minute movies are you guys making? Yeah. No, 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 shut up. Poor Ryan. He's trying. Trying, Gus. Yeah. Like two sacks of potatoes around 5 a.m. What symptoms the boys present? Dehydration, disorientation. Both had injuries and pupil response time consistent with a serious concussion. <laughs> yeah. Both and keep them under close observation. On the Glasgow coma scale, lock seven. Some type of uh, physiological trauma that affected their nervous system. Uh, first and second degree burns on feet and hands. And there's a gouge on Chad's shoulder. He said the aliens have taken a sample. Their dad's convinced it's an act to try to get out of some jam. What do you think, doctor? <laughs> <laughs> well... Like old Doc Lyon used to tell us at Harvard, that's how the patient tells you this. That guy went to Harvard. Okay, John, we, we we gotta we gotta um, repeat those last two comments are the best. <laughs> <laughs> um, a very good friend of mine, Amoral Crackpot. So good to see you here, Steve. Uh, I don't remember this episode of Young Hercules. Yes, the '90s are very strong with this one. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, I think in reaction to the two topless teens, uh, Barry Corbin's like, work it, boys, work it. <laughs> it is. I'm very uncomfortable with the amount of shirtlessness there, but uh, <laughs> seems over. case log update. After interviewing nearly a dozen witnesses, I've decided to expedite protocol and focus our attention on the land surrounding the sightings. We've established a 10 square mile perimeter. It's hoped that a thorough on-site inspection in conjunction with physiological assessment of the subjects will help us determine what happened here. I charted all the reported UFO sighting to date, ran a computer model. It could have been anywhere within this 20-mile square area. So unless the boys tell us more, I can't accurately assess the event's location. No power lines, no water towers, nothing that could be perceived as a UFO. There are some fallow spots. Other than that, there's nothing out here but corn, barley, and soybeans. Nothing out here. Kind of hitching his get along. He's kind of loving. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what I need you to do. I need you to put on your suit. I need you to tie up your tie. And I need you to walk around a cornfield all day. <laughs> Be sure you wear your nice office shoes, too. No well, geophysical elements, no anomalous energy fields. Oy. Wait. <laughs> you think in combination of this vegetation cause hallucinogenic effects? You got nothing more than your basic agricultural staples out here. There's you put all this stuff right together, there. you'll get nothing but a really healthy breakfast cereal. Exactly. Now that's Barclay Hope. And I can't even count all the shows that Barclay Hope's been in. He is, and commercials. Oh my God, this guy has worked like crazy. But this was a big series for him. He was in all four seasons. Uh, and I think his character is from Newfoundland or Bell Island, which is attached to Newfoundland, which is where my family's from. So of course, I think Parkway Hope's awesome. 
even though he's wearing padded shoulders in a field. Um, but do do you guys recognize him from anything? Not not at all. Not me. No. Yeah. N- never even heard of that name. I mean, just that all American, you know, boy look in Canada. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is he Canadian or he's American? He is. He is Canadian. Insomnia, shortness of breath, migraine headaches. Yeah. All of the above. Chucking up the big alimony in a 24 hour day job. How's your night vision? Any um, clouding or dimming of peripheral vision? Some. You seem to know what you're looking for, Doc. Yeah, I've seen symptoms like this before. Where? The people who lead stressful lives. Or another UFO freak, right? I wasn't abducted by a UFO, Doc. Those boys were. They say they were. No, I'm believing this whole UFO thing. Sheriff, you're a little overworked, but otherwise you're in fine shape. That's what my wife told me, John. Yes. It doesn't say so at the top of the episode, but are we are we supposedly watching reenactments of real events, or is this actually some guy just walking around, supposedly recording real people? Um, it's adorable. It's adorable what they're doing. Um, they <laughs> they, they always open with like a captain's log. It's always <laughs> done on this super scientific uh, microphone attached to the earpiece they have. Which I just love, like, oh, this is so scientific, eh? You should see <laughs> all the great science equipment we have, eh? And uh, take off. <laughs> and I got to tell you, just looking at that sheriff, I'm like, oh, we're related, aren't we? <laughs> I have that nose. I have that. I have that like pointy chin, but lack of jaw. I have those cheekbones. Oh my god! I bet we're like 23 and me. I bet we're like two degrees apart. <laughs> he is wearing the stepfather wrestling uh, gear the muscle <laughs> yeah. t-shirt he, is, he used to wrestle in that. He, he just needs some mustard and ketchup on there <laughs> so true <laughs> oh shoot okay uh here i'll get us back into this okay she left me. oh where were you we were cutting through this field when it came out of nowhere some stuff was pushing us down. down. The, the lights, lights were blinding him. The air smelled funny, like after a thunderstorm. And then they knocked us out. Zapped us, I guess. Who did? The aliens. Duh. <laughs> okay. Are, do the marks on their faces keep changing from scene to scene? Is that just me? I, I, I think you're right. <laughs> Are they? I don't know. I don't remember the the uh, scabs being quite so prominent on the other one earlier. Yeah, yeah. Hang on. What's where's the? I don't say this often, but where's the topless scene? Oh, God. well, you probably do, John, but not in this context. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. That is true. All right, let me get you back to uh, hopefully. Okay, I remember that reaction shot. Okay. Pushing us down. The lights were blinding him. The air smelled funny, like after a thunderstorm. Okay, that's and then different. They knocked us out. Zapped us, I guess. I Who guess did? he's about the same. Yeah. But Ryan Gosling got, later on has just a little stripe down his face. Yeah. Oh, there, oh, there it is. Is this true, Chad? I woke up, man. I heard all over. This guy looks like a leprechaun stepping on his face with those little footprints. He still feels sick. (laughs) I think it's terrible that they got space herpes. (laughs) (laughs) This is is Steve's. They're getting beat between takes. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's what happens when you have unprotected probing. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, Steve, uh, Amoral Crackpot, I believe this is also your call uh, that um, the doctor is played by the Canadian Robert Englund. I was thinking that. (laughs) I was thinking combination of Robert Englund and Dr. Loomis from the Halloween movies. Oh, Lord. Hey, my buddy Ty Lord. Excellent. Uh, Good to have you on, man. He's a big sci fi, sci fi guy, too. Oh, well. You should be having a good time. In the right place. Uh, Now, the lack of uh, continuity, Barry the Case says, well, what hump? Uh, (laughs) That's a uh, young Frankenstein reference about lack of community because uh, the hunchback's hump keeps moving. Oh, I I go, some kept moving back and forth. (laughs) If it happened, I was going to die. 
Adam, I'm talking to Chad. Are you <laughs> Damn! Sure that the wounds you received came from that ordeal that evening? This wasn't an ordeal, man. We were abducted by aliens. Don't you get it? I don't know if they're getting it. <laughs> aliens did. <good. laughs> And then two minutes of reaction. Adam, Adam registered high cardiovascular and neurological responses during questioning. They're hiding something. But I can't pinpoint exactly what. Looks like they were pretty rough shape to me. Yes. Aside from cuts and lesions, there's evidence of dysrhythmia on both boys. But a regular heartbeat can be inherited genetically. True enough. But the pattern of the lesions suggests <laughs> some radiation burst. Hi, Lord, I says, Sorry, Lord I, says I haven't seen so many shirtless Canadians since Stampede Lord. Wrestling. Their father's on the release <laughs> forms. <laughs> and and Chef Adam <laughs> refused to acknowledge their parents' authority, legal or otherwise. We'll get what we can from other sources. Sandra, anything further from your scans of the surrounding area? Minor traces of pesticide use. I've sent soil samples to headquarters for further analysis. Tasha? Background checks into the area are fairly typical so far. Strong interactive community, agrarian-based economy. No previous record of phenomena before these incidents. Suddenly half the town turns up for a free light show. What about people passing through? Migrant workers. All fairly closed mouth. I think they're more concerned I'm at work for immigration. Oh. Closed, closed mouth. Yes, a little. Uh, apparently, there were some border problems. I don't yeah, know. I was say, why, why do us Mexicans always get blamed for everything? <laughs> now, now we pro probe these youngsters. <laughs> <laughs> I I think that's terrible, and the Mexican people should not have to put up with that. That's what I think. You're Although. Here. On this show, if they're talking about invaders from south of the border, they do mean actual people from Iowa. <laughs> I'll swore they saw nothing. Reduce the perimeter. Prepare full monitoring and surveillance. I want to know if anything comes within five miles of this field. We've begun monitoring of the area in the Look at all the suits! Has visited this site twice in the past three weeks. In the eight days since initiating surveillance, we've picked up nothing. Sorry, I just want to say, on behalf of men with weak chins and weak jawlines everywhere, by now all of these fellas have beards. <laughs> it's the beauty of the, of the beard, beard are, right? Uh, look at look at this beard. You you saw my ridiculous face in the Powerade commercial. This beard <laughs> is such an improvement. I was oh I was I can't see much in your physique, John. Look look at your face. Sorry. <laughs> okay so this guy would be canada's hmm, i don't know i feel like he's like their paul giametti <laughs> <laughs> strong character actor. great hair this is better work he said to the one black guy in iowa <laughs> <laughs> iowa perrin canada Thank you. Des Moines air traffic has clear skies, no scheduled flights, military or civilian. Same as when the other sightings occurred. <laughs> I have something. Long range bogeys coming in from the northwest at five miles in closing. How many? Two. Coming in low, 20 feet off the deck. Tasha, track them on the Litton scope. Do we have anything on radar? We have target lock. This is the sort of thing that I, I love. And uh, <laughs> a world crackpot brings this up. Someone wrote this. Someone filmed this, someone edited this, and it was all agreed that this was the most exciting and engaging they could make this scene. <laughs> I, and I, I think he wrote that um, based on the round table scene where I was like, I can't even understand what you people are saying because you're so bored while you're saying it. I mean, you know, th this is kind of a, a precursor to like what we know now as the so called police procedurals, where tons of exposition delivered dryly and in rapid succession later on at least joe townsell you are a genius that is absolutely true this is procedural it's like something happened and now we're 
and now we're investigating it. Now we're going step by step, but it is a little boring. Uh, and, <laughs> and, and it's only like a 20 minute script, you know, it's like, Oh, how did you manage to make only 20 minutes? So boring. Well, my theory is I'm gonna I'm gonna make a prediction not having seen this before, so I'm not cheating, but yeah, yeah. You know, I don't think it's aliens at all. I think this is where um the cornfield to which Anthony in It's a Good Life Twilight Zone, that's where he sent all his <laughs> enemies, and um they're gonna uncover a jack in the box any any minute now. <laughs> um that that uh that Twilight Zone storyline was done twice, uh, and uh, Joe's referring to both of them. The first one um ronnie howard i believe plays the little boy who sends people out to the cornfield bill mummy bill mummy oh well done and then uh and then yeah they bring it back for twilight zone the movie uh they, right. they uh joe dante i think directed that that little uh story within the story in which bill mummy had a cameo as one of the people at the diner oh wow i forgot all about that holy cow and if, if, I, we, if we can digress just a moment further since course. i brought it up of course um the very inferior twilight zone series of the early 2000s it's the only time that in twilight zone history they did a sequel to an episode called it's still a good life where we see anthony and uh, his mother years later wow i love it uh we will pro well let's see yeah yeah no we can watch that i'm like wait can we watch that is that retro enough of course anything oh god anything we refer to is pretty much retro that, uh, that's my prediction is we're, we're seeing the actual cornfield that anthony used to send all all the people that didn't think good thoughts <laughs> <laughs> okay let's get back to the um I would say action, but that would be uh, not the <laughs> not the right word for it. I'm sorry. We were just about. Let me let me let them build up the tension here. Thank you. That's Des Moines air traffic has clear skies, no scheduled flights, military or civilian. Same as when the other sightings occurred. I have something. Long range bogies coming in from the northwest at five miles in closing. I mean, two coming in low, twenty feet off the deck. Gosh, I tracked him on the Litton scope. Do we have anything on radar? <laughs> we have target lock. Confirmed. Two bogies zeroing in on our position. Okay. Anybody want to uh, take a guess at what they are? Because I'm going to go with black helicopters. Anyone else? Weather balloons. <laughs> Those aren't the aliens? <laughs> the Enterprise. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Here we go. It's getting a little tense. Getting a little yeah. fast. I can't identify them. Night vision images are clear. Radar tracking systems are down. Now, I don't understand this. They must be jamless. We still have visuals. Launch the aerial probe. I want identification now. Another probe. They're launching a probe, everybody. Oh, well, there is a weather balloon. Oh. <laughs> Hold on. I've lost remote scans. Long range sensors are blind. Something's definitely interfering with our tracking system. Anything from the probe? So it's an exciting part of the show where no one can see anything. <laughs> oh no! Who blew What's up our balloon? balloon? It disappeared. What the hell is going on out there? Anybody? Oh, well. flying! Hey, log da, 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 We're currently attempting to retrieve the remote aerial probe lost during last night's operations. It remains doubtful as to whether the probe holds any information which could help us identify the two UFOs we tracked before our instruments were jammed. What are they hoping to find in this cornfield? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, honestly, two guys go into a cornfield. They they get conked out. They wake up with scars and lesions. I think there's like Roundup on the plants. That's like all <laughs> I could think. But there are these two flying globes. So I guess we got that going. I do love at the center of this shot wearing the trucker cap is one person who is dressed appropriately for being in a freaking cornfield. <laughs> I don't believe. Aha, over here about 20 yards. About what? So you didn't see anything in the sky last night. No lights. Sorry, uh, sorry. I got it. Jeez, what a mess. This thing sure took a beating. What could have caused this? Uh-oh. 
What did I tell you? <laughs> You're right. Sounds, Sounds like a rocking profession. Don't worry about it. You. <laughs> you had this illness. Too long. Many of us are sick. But we must work for our families. Um, is that a Mexican guy in I, Canada? I think it I, is. I was just thinking the same thing. I think it is. It's a Mexican Canadian. Canadian Paul Rodriguez, I think. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, Mexico's part of North America. I'm I'm <laughs> telling my racist friends this all the time. We're always having this conversation. Man, they I, are North American the, uh, folks. Because of this, I would think that'd be a million to one. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Let's get him into the lab and run some tests. Dr. Hendricks will know for sure, but he needs a ventilator inhaler and some antibiotics. Man. Give him some Vicks. Some of that great free health care. <laughs> it just be all those pesticides. That Whoa, what's on his shoulder? Damn! Dude's that's blistered. That's shoulder herpes? <laughs> Now his neck too. It's all over. <laughs> yeah. Retro oh, Ryan has got some great shit showing. That is oh, that's my other, my other large amounts of chemical-based chemical toxins in my system. I haven't seen anything like this since Kurdistan. Kurdistan? Well, that's hard to say. They've been exposed to something. So I'm just trying to identify. Could it have come from the field? <laughs> Possibly. Luis well, says he doesn't know where it could have come from, but. The people, people he works with, with, most of them have the same illness. <laughs> Good point, Barry. They're all here working illegally, so no one will speak up. Oh, wait a minute. First, I want you and Peter to go on a covert cell on 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 I assume there's like a baby in that truck and they're afraid of waking it. <laughs> Do you really think we should go explore another area? Yeah, probably. We should go explore another area. Here we go. Hey, these are low-key performances, John. You got you to gotta appreciate that. But what, what this reminds me of suddenly, do yeah. you remember um, in the pseudoscience uh, uh, double feature, Grindhouse, the first segment by directed by Robert Rodriguez mm. called um, Planet, Planet Terror? Terror? Yeah. Getting, getting some strong vibes here with that, with the sudden, you know, quick mutated lesions and all that good stuff. Oh, damn. I, you know, I have to see that. I've never seen that. Oh, real one. cheesy. Good stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I was just thinking about what those two boys went through. Be careful. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, and I'll take care of Axel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go check out the cornfield again. <laughs> Lab one, this is Tasha. We're entering the east quadrant of Leighton's Field. Let's have to stand I don't, we've never met Tasha. Tasha, don't move, don't move. Okay. What is it? Ooh. Oh yeah, there it is. Night vision. Very high energy field emissions. All right, stand back, stand back. What? What? That's not that cow fence I was referring to earlier. <laughs> Repeat on very it. Very neighborly, Mr. Layton. Downright yeah, rude, I'd say. <laughs> oh, my God, that's so lame. Wait a minute. This guy looks like somebody. Didn't Chad say something... Like he the looks like the guy from the Matrix. Like after the yeah. Ozone. There must have been 200 volts running through it. Those kids must have had a hell of a shot. <laughs> well, that would explain the boy's irregular heart rate, and the barbed wire would account for Chad's wounds. But it still doesn't account for their reluctance to cooperate. I talked to you, the girls, the Keeler boys, were with the night of their claimed abduction, and it turns out they all indulged in a little homemade jungle juice. What? Mr. Keeler's a devout Baptist. Wait a minute. They were drinking beers out of the can. Homemade jungle juice. Hmm. <laughs> okay, whatever. <laughs> uh, the term is questionable to me anyway. Wow. <laughs> By the way, if we ever want to investigate UFOs, we should all go to the men's warehouse and make sure that we hey. we get these great suits that these hey, guys. Hey, you, you, you buy two, get the third one. Get the third <laughs> one free. 
of Andor. I'm, I'm guessing the redheaded guy seated is the one who got the free one. <laughs> buddy, buddy from Charles and Charge. That's what they're trying to hide. <laughs> as far as the boys are concerned, this uh, encounter with a electrified tripwire could qualify as an alien abduction, but that still doesn't explain the rest of the sighting. <laughs> movement, Connor. We've got movement. Activate remote scans. I have a target lock. Two heat sources closing fast at three miles due north by northwest. Oh, Peter. We have double bogeys oh, headed in your direction. Do you have visual contact at this time? Oh, his guy Lab there. one, nothing in the sky. <laughs> Hold on. Affirmative. Lab one, I have a visual on two UFOs coming out of the northwest. Two Northern UFOs. Horizon. Two heat trails and night vision is detecting burnout. Oh, jeez. They're really fucking... Oh, jeez, Louise. Whoa, is that a curse word in there? That's the ever seen. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, my God. Barclay Hope just really taking us there dramatically. Hang on. I want to, <laughs> I want to hear this again. We have double bogeys headed in your direction. Do you have visual contact at this time? Negative, Lab 1. Nothing in the sky. Hold on. Affirmative. Lab 1, I have a visual on two UFOs coming out of the northwest. Low on the horizon. Two heat trails and night vision is detecting burnout. Oh, jeez. They're really fucking about 20 feet off the deck. Booking. <laughs> booking, huh? Well, no wonder they're I really was booking. Yeah, no, booking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're booking it, eh? Oh, they're going so fast up there. Yeah, oh, yeah. Fast. Why isn't this special headset working better? Huh. I keep waiting for Richard Grimes <laughs> to show up too. <laughs> now Barry keeps saying that in the background they're playing uh they're playing video games. <laughs> playing so, asteroids. <laughs> so uh he says uh asteroids and uh so everybody keep an eye on the background if you get a chance to see what games they're playing. Uh, let's get back to it. This is the exciting part. I really shouldn't. Can you it. identify the UFO? Peter, do you copy? I need visuals on this now. I wonder if I can identify the UFO. It's not a U anymore. It's an I. I've got a lock. We have an ID match on the UFOs. Helicopters, bell jet rangers, two of them. Why didn't we ID them before? They appear to be modified for night flying and stealth runs. I can't believe I can't believe I got it right. Yeah, I was going to say, have you watched this? The I have not seen this like one. They're emitting some kind of liquid. <laughs> they're crop liquid. dusting. We got to get out of here. Let's run, let's run. They're crop what? dusting, eh? How the aliens are peeing on the fence. <laughs> well, hold on. They're breaking pattern, heading out southeast at 150 knots. Wait, Claire, keep them in your sights. Where are you going? After. <gasps> oh, no. Toronto's David Duchovny is on the job. Watch out. You were just on the Enterprise Bridge. Like we found your UFOs. Well, what are we waiting Kirk. for? Let's go. <laughs> Hop into the cab of my well-lit truck. Wait, so I'm traveling with the sheriff. Keep us pointed in the right direction. We have visual contact. We're heading due south. Ty, Ty Lord, what year is this? He asked. This is 1990. I want to say six. Break up. I estimate them to be out of range in less than a minute. We're gonna run on a rope. In other words, Ty Lord, it's timeless. <laughs> yeah, that, that's pretty pretty good effects, though. Oh, yeah. Retro Ryan's more like UFO nose. So uh, a a UF nose. Am I right? The imaging laser radar tracking system. <laughs> I've lost them here. They're out of range. ILR status. Any second now. Confirm I have both aircraft on my scope. Heading due southeast about four kilometers away and slowing down. They're on target. Due southeast four kilometers. Excellent work. <laughs> <They're on target. laughs> what? Trappers. Who would have thought? Well, that's two squad car is there. Oh, I guess that is a four by four. I ain't saying nothing. I just put out a warrant for the arrest of Kirk Layton, the man that owns this land. I believe running illegally modified aircraft without clearance is a federal offense. So is using bad pesticides. I've analyzed those pesticides. Turns out to be toxic being smuggled in from Mexico. Pretty deadly stuff. Damn. Even in Canada, they're slamming Mexico. Jesus Christ. I, I got that right, though. When that guy was coughing, I was like, it was probably the pesticides. <laughs> but it was the pesticides. <laughs> Well, this is John wild. And Mara are, are two for two. 
<laughs> this is I I kind of hate that we were able to take this show apart so well. <laughs> I mean, uh, granted, we are talented at what we do, but still, this is flimsy as f. Oh, sorry. Was was this an advertisement for like eat organic? Is that, is that what they're trying to do? <laughs> well, I think this might have been early in the days of hey, maybe these pesticides aren't as safe as they told us they were. Like I I. I think this might be a, um, although, you know, that was around forever, but they're saying they're banned pesticides. And this, oh, the, okay. so the oh. landowner is using banned pesticides and these souped up helicopters. <laughs> what the hell? You know, I, I gotta, I gotta ask Barry's question. <laughs> so they are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Everybody's right. <laughs> damn. I can't even I can't even get offended at that. That was fun. <laughs> so like Ryan's like all the budget went to that one day helicopter rental. I'm sure you're right about that. Oh, and uh, you know what, Tyler? If you ever want us to watch Quantum Leap reruns, uh, it, we'll do that. We can do that on the show. That's not a big ask. At all. <laughs> all right, ban pesticides. Uh, ban pesticides is my favorite RHCP album. Red Hot Chili Peppers. Red, Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> <laughs> I, at first, I was like, I don't remember the insane clown posse doing. And no, no, no. I. Oh, I <laughs> uh, what does Steve say? Oh, so Jake the Snake Roberts is the evil mastermind behind all of this because it's the DDT. <laughs> the DDT. It, you know. Uh, now, that at was the a end of the episode. Man. Is Dan Acker going to give us a cautionary note about you know banned pesticides? Oh, he will. He will. Or something. Or something. Or something. So he put stealth modifications in the helicopters, flew in low and jammed all radio transmissions to cover the operation. These guys were good. You mean somebody trained them? Oh, yeah, very well. Why go to all that trouble just to dust crops? His acreage was dying. His corn was infested with earworms, resistant to most pesticides, except toxicine. Yeah, so much for the UFO convention. Now you can tell the boys in the rest of the town what they really saw. <laughs> If they want to know what they really saw. Oh, that's foreboding. Final case log entry. Kurt Lake has been arrested and charged with illegal use of aircraft and deadly chemicals. I would like to talk to you about being an extra for TV shows in Canada. First off, this guy's playing a farmer, so he knew he should bring a straw hat. <laughs> now, granted it's the same straw hat he wears to the conventions when he cosplays for one piece <laughs> did i get that right um this is my monkey d luffy hat eh <laughs> i'm sorry let me get you right back okay okay if they want to know what they really saw i'm telling you that's my face what is that man doing with final case face? log entry <laughs> Kurt Layton has been arrested and charged with illegal use of aircraft and deadly chemicals. We also got the some farm workers were all treated for various ailments caused by the pesticides. Everyone affected has made a full recovery. Ryan Case Gosling. Even these Outlet. guys have no scars anymore. They went away quick. Sometimes the most extraordinary occurrences have the simplest explanations. These yeah, on a crappy TV show. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's just a helicopter spraying chemicals on food. You know, X Files never did that. There, I said it. <laughs> Teenagers weren't abducted by aliens and UFOs. No, this was human greed, coupled with a blatant and criminal disregard for the health, welfare, and stability of an honest, hardworking community. No ET or flying saucers here. I'm Dan Aykroyd for SciFi. Oh, wait a minute. Why did the two, why did the two uh, boys think they'd been abducted? Really? I was going to say what happened with the probing. How do they... Wasn't there something about probing? <laughs> oh, yeah. It was probing. And... <laughs> so, <laughs> man, that wood alky, man. That's, that's some lethal stuff. <laughs> well, they did go skinny dipping together. <laughs> And had a few beers. <laughs> Who knows what happened? <laughs> well, and apparently there's some jungle juice we never heard about <laughs> that was enough to make you um, faint in a field and think you were probed. 
I Tell do me want a sequel to this and concentrate more on that part of the story. <laughs> that's what I want to see. I mean, there's a market for it. That's that's for sure. Uh, <laughs> I I will say this because Tyler says, "Good God, this show sucks." <laughs> uh, you know, this episode sucked. That is that is absolutely for sure. But I'm telling you, this show got better. Uh. When they uh, when they basically took all those boring Canadians and they um, they fired them for season two <laughs> and replaced them with various you know sort of broken forgotten celebrities like Matt Frewer and Michael Moriarty, uh, it it did get better. Uh, I actually really enjoyed this show, but I didn't, as I said earlier, I didn't really watch the first season, uh, so it's it's a lot to deal with. Um, I don't think we're going to get anything out of these credits. But I always did like Peter Aykroyd. He would occasionally do um, films that showed up on uh, Saturday Night Live. Uh, you know, it reminds me of, especially the um, closing thoughts with uh, Dan Aykroyd. And I, I'm, I'm sorry the uh, the name escapes me, but before The Twilight Zone, Rod Serling did like a TV movie that was Twilight Zone-esque. Oh, did he? Really? And it was a Desilu production. Yeah. It was actually the Desilu Playhouse. It was an episode of that. Oh, wow. So there's there's uh, Desi Arnaz. So they had like this pretty decent, you know, oversized Twilight Zone episode, basically. Yeah, yeah. Well, at the end, here comes Desi, and he says, you know, I think there might be a logical explanation for this. Of course, I'm. he said it, it as Desi did, not, not like me. <laughs> and all the critics in America said, shut up, Desi. Can we just, like, speculate? That's kind of what we got here is that Eckhart giving a rational explanation for... I still think there was UFOs involved. I'm sorry. Those two boys wouldn't lie. <laughs> they wouldn't hallucinate. <laughs> it's, it's not fair uh, to just accuse poor Ryan Gosling. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I want to remind everybody, uh, I was actually loading this up to use it later, that uh, our spot got out of here on uh, the wonderful that it has been. Uh, on the wonderful and fantastic uh, Retro Rangers, brought to you as always by JoeTownsel.com. Joe Townsel, not just a great co-host on this show. Also, a fantastic writer, the guy who will take you to dark places that you will be so glad you got to see and experience. Thank so. you, sir. And you know what? A little bit earlier than usual, but it's always a good time for commercial, isn't it? Absolutely. A hundred percent. I thought this show was brought to you by Whole Foods after that episode. <laughs> eat, eat organic. <laughs> oh. Ryan says this makes Mac and me look like look Oscar caliber. Yes. Yes, you are 100 percent right about that. Um, do you think uh Amoral Crackpot, aka our buddy Steve says, do you think it was on Playhouse 90? That, the one um, I mentioned? Yeah, yeah. The name of the story is Casey, but I'm I'm fairly certain it was the Desi Lou Playhouse because it was hosted by Desi Arnaz. Interesting. Interesting. I think I think that but um that's a good point also, because I think there was another Rod Serling. It was a non-genre effort yes. called Requiem for, a, Requiem for a Heavyweight that was on Playhouse 90. That's right. I mean, that sounds uh, correct. yes, I, I agree. Uh, Rod Serling was very famous uh, for that. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Steve is uh, doing research. Uh, God bless you, Steve. Uh, we can use all the help we can get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Westinghouse Desi Lou Playhouse. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. Um, yeah, I mean, that was the thing. Rod Serling became Rod Serling because he was a great writer and not just a writer, uh, as Joe says, not just a writer of genre uh, fiction, but also of just general fiction, just a really good writer. One thing um, is clear from tonight's episode, Rod Serling did not write it. <laughs> <laughs> How... How much of a tease do you think it was that we went through this 20 minutes and it just turns out, oh, it was illegal pesticides? Like, I, I am pretty mad about that. <laughs> I'm pretty mad. Well, John, I mean, you, you watched the series. Um, was it always a rational explanation to cap it off or 
where some of them actually um, unexplained and potentially otherworldly. Yes, to your second suggestion. However, uh, this was a show, and I don't think this is a bad way of doing this kind of show. This was a show where they would make it look like the uh, solution was this, but really the solution was something different. Mm -hmm. And so they would lead you down the wrong path. They would, uh, you know, it, it was, but, but that's how you make a show interesting. That's how you keep a, a storyline up. One of the things that changed, not just the cast, was they would go to a full hour script. Uh, just one story, story per episode. Oh, God. And I hope it got more fast paced when they did that. <laughs> it did. This and figure and it half hours, a little bit, a little bit of a slow burn, shall we say? Yes. Well, they, um, they took elements that were good in other shows <laughs> and they would, uh, Steve made me laugh again with another wrestling reference. I didn't <laughs> know Vince Russo wrote this show. <laughs> uh, Vince Russo, a terrible wrestling writer who actually had a lot of success. Uh, the, um, yeah, the way they went was very much in the direction of X-Files, which was there's, um, there's controversy, there's cover-ups, there's conspiracies behind the scenes, there's forces at work, there's, you know, there's opposite people while you're trying to find out the truth. There are people working against you at the same time trying to kill the truth. Uh, so, yeah, pretty interesting show. And again, Matt Frewer, I'm always a fan of Matt Frewer. I loved Max Headroom. Um, I loved Dr. Doctor. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff he did that I, I loved. And actually as an actor, I did get to meet him, uh, doing voiceover oh. and a very Wait, nice man. Made it. One of those guys was Max Headroom. Which one was that? No, not tonight. Oh, okay. Not tonight. Uh, eventually Matt Frewer, Max Headroom, uh, joins the show to oh. try to try to improve it. And he is one of the big improvements. He's really good on it. I like him a great deal. You actually did an impersonation earlier, John, when you were glitching out. You did a little Max Headroom. Was that <laughs> your, you're playing homage to Max <laughs> Headroom. <laughs> you know, I can only describe what I saw, which is you're looking at your screen right now. You're seeing three windows, you know, me, Joe, and Mario. Um, what I saw was all three windows had like a spinning circle thing in them. <laughs> And I was like, oh no, oh no. No, we, we were just well, there. I had that for about, there. Yeah. yeah, I had that for about five seconds about 10 minutes ago, but it said, oh boy, you're not having me, but fortunately I came back. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, that'll do it uh for this episode of Retro Rangers. Uh this is this is our third show, Joe. So this, this is our third, third show, and we're we we hit the ground running. We're just, I I think we're just getting better, and especially tonight. God, we got the retro wave uh, champion here, Mario. We had other retro fans. It was it was yeah, just yeah, a great that, party tonight. Yeah, that was fantastic that everybody showed up. Uh, we really hope that <laughs> that you will uh, join us each Sunday, uh, five p.m. here on the Best Coast, and uh, that would be, of course, be eight p.m. on the East Coast, the Beast Coast. And uh, we we want to see you uh, again. We definitely want you to come back and watch more of the show. Uh, Barry, the K, uh, we certainly hope you join us again. Uh, Love your Steve, comments, Barry. Steve, uh, a, a moral crackpot, <laughs> certainly hope uh, we see you again. Uh, I hope that uh, Ryan and uh, Ty Lord uh, find us interesting <laughs> to yeah. come back. Tyler said that show sucks and, and he buys his movies at the Dollar Tree. So that's saying something. <laughs> he didn't like that show. <laughs> Let me tell you something. When, whenever I'm I, I'm at a, a place that has cheap DVDs, I'm always like, well, it wouldn't hurt to buy like $10 worth of them. <laughs> it, it's always fun to watch really crappy stuff. Uh, and I had a great time watching this crappy show with you guys. So thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, th thanks for having me, uh, Joe and John. Thank you. Please, for please me. come back soon, Mario. Because <laughs> anytime, uh, definitely, you let you me know, know. You, you and everybody else just brought so much to it tonight. Yeah, yeah. I, absolutely. And Mario, how can people find the Retro Wave? 
uh the retro wave podcast it's on spotify mm-hmm. apple Podcasts, uh, amazon music and it's on i'm putting all the episodes on youtube so my, my youtube is retro tiburon right there just retro tiburon right there on youtube Excellent. everything's on there a oh, fantastic you are you're very Check good it out okay i don't where was the thing i was gonna use <laughs> I'm so sorry about this. I know it's not this. Hang on. This can't be the thing. Oh, it is. There it is. It is. Oh, hang on. Turn down that can again. Wow. Uh, folks, that'll do it uh, for Scarbase 80s, Retro Rangers. Uh, uh, Mr. Townsville, would you take us through the traditional goodbye? Who's who buys this? Just join us next week. Same retro time. Same retro channel. Uh, you can it. find us on uh, Facebook. Uh, you can find us through uh, the Starbase 80 page on Facebook. Uh, you can, of course, look up me, uh, John Weber. I'm on there. Joe Townsend's on there. And, uh, yeah, we want to have fun with you. So uh, come back with, with us uh, anytime you can uh, on a Sunday. And uh, next week, you know, I'm not even going to predict what we're going to watch next week. Joe, and you and I need a meeting to decide what next week's show is. I'm good. Mario, you will be hearing us uh, from us again, my friend. Thank you so much for everything. You got it. Later, guys. See you later, Mario. Mr. Townsville, thank you so much. JoeTownsville.com. Go visit him. Take a look at what he's built. It's beautiful. Thank you, sir. And uh, that's that's it. Thanks so much. Bye now. <laughs>